there's a certain pride you have when you know your history that we can't have right now because we don't know our history. Just think about where a black man was at in the 1940s and 1950s, not knowing that, yo, oh, we built the pyramids, we built all this. Africa is not a, the, the fucking garbage. Africa is the source of all resources, the source of all life. Now that that's known, the people that know that think of how they feel. Mm. Think of how they raise their babies. Think of the, what's coming out of the babies that know that, right? Do you know that that don't exist in Asia? Mm. Do you know that that don't exist in the Native American world? That don't exist. And if a motherfucker say it exists, show it to me. Show me where, show me where it's, it's, it's a thing because I want to promote it. I'm not against it. I'm not mad at it. I want to know about it, but I know it don't exist because I went, I went to India looking for it. I went to them looking for knowledge itself. I told them, Kalo lok protom lok. Kalo mata protom mata. Kalo, this is all I'm saying is my broken Bengali. I'm saying the black man is the first man. The black mind is the first mind. Right? And when the people is hearing it, they darker than y'all. And they like, yeah. Literally, they like, oh, uh, you're like a god. They're like, yo, what do you study? What do you know? You know, knowledge itself. I don't even know what the Bengali word for that is because there's not like a real culture pushing that. So, when the black man, original man of the West wake up, what Osman Sharif said at that council of, uh, of, 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 of uh, the major leaders of Islam, like we read about in the problem book, for those of us looking at the problem book, when Osman Sharif stood up, he said, man, until the lost our nation in the West is woken up, ain't no hope for the world. Mm. I'm paraphrasing. So when the black, that's why I took my mission so seriously. Because the more I read, I'll be like, oh shit, a motherfucker from the East, and I'm talking about Farad Muhammad came over here on a mission like, yo, I got to raise up this black nation and was mad at all the Indians that came before him because they went pussyfooting around the motherfucking real issue at hand. They wanted to make everybody a god. Oh, yeah, sure, you're a white supremacist. You could be a god, too. Just breathe. No, it's not. We all peace. We all love. What the fuck? No, that hippie shit was not what we were supposed to be taught. Farah came with the teaching that we really needed to have. Like, and that's why he was like, yo, man, I had to do all this shit to make a curriculum. That's why he made 120, he made Supreme Wisdom, because he seen, without a curriculum, these people gonna distort and twist everything I say. They just gonna say I was talking about flowers and singing and shit. Because little do people know that Farah was dancing. If you read early histories, Farah was dancing. He did the waltz. He taught the Muslims that the waltz came from original people. Do you know I've been trying to figure out the history of the waltz since then? That come from Bernstein Muhammad. She was a secretary when Farad was around. She wrote a very little known publication. I dug up every publication I could find from that time period, guys. What was, what was the name of her publication? You watch me find this shit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, if it's not here, it's in some kind of like, it's, it's in one of these, it, it's, it's somewhere in one of these shelves. Mm -hmm. But if you look up Bernstein Muhammad, it was, it, you barely could even get this. Like you'd have to like send money somewhere and then they, then they would mail it to you. Oh. But it wasn't even no online system. Like you just had to mail them some money. Hmm. And they gonna send it to you. Yeah, yeah. So I don't even know if the people that was doing it, it was, this was like 10 years ago when I got it. So they might not even be around no more. Hmm. But I got a copy of it. Hmm. I got a copy of, of articles that was written back in the 30s. You know, when he was around. And, and piecing together that history and, and studying, I was like, damn, man, what a beautiful mission, man. And then if you know the details that a lot of people don't know, like what he was doing for his 20 years on the West Coast. Mm. Well, that's a rich history right there. I don't want to dig that up. I went and dug that up. I had to dig up the trail. Where, yo, what was he doing in San Francisco? Do you know the Farrell? Man, I can't even. Yeah, yeah I, heard, I heard about that. What? That, 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 he, was, that he, he went to the West Coast or something. I'm not sure it was San Francisco, but I know that he was. He was in Oregon, he was in San Francisco, he was in LA, he was in San Diego. He was in contact with Elijah from what I was studying. He was in contact in 1935. Mm. He might have wrote him a letter at that point. Um, but Elijah used to hear from Farad in his head. So Farad, 
uh, uh, and him must have discussed this telepathic communication thing. But you know, in Sufism, which is like the godly tradition of, of Islam, they teach all that. And they actually call themselves, when they become a teacher, you know, they call themselves a Wali. His name was Wali Farah Muhammad. You know, they teach that as a man grows in, in his understanding and, and really delivers out these teachings, he embodies the will of Allah. And he lives out the will of Allah and he can actually control the weather and make it rain on one side and hail on the other. This is Sufi teaching. Mm. And he said that everything agrees with him, even the climate. Any food he eat will agree, agree with him. Because mm. you become, you let go of your ego, your nafs, the nafs goes away. And all that's left when your nafs goes is Allah. See, when all your bullshit gone, all that's left of you is God. You know, so you not the bullshit. You the God. We just got a lot of bullshit on us that we make the mistaken idea of associating with ourselves. But the Quran tells us don't associate partners with Allah. So you can't associate the fuckery with Allah. You're not the fuckery. You might do the fuckery. But you know, God do everything. That's the beautiful thing about Shiva. Shiva drink, smoke, cuss. Don't mean he unrighteous. Because whatever he doing, he doing for a reason that you might not even understand. People talk about that like, well, like about that about the gods. You know, the gods must be crazy. Yet somehow we create results that's so beautiful. If Mega did this.